All right, what's up? I just want to make a quick video here. It's been a long, long time. Uh, I don't even know how long right now, but it's April already. And um, anyways, there are several factors. One is that um, it's been really slow. It was really slow until that new stimulus came out. I'm sure I'm sure everybody is, uh, all these cell phone repair stores are facing the same things and, and uh, other businesses as well, probably, I suspect. I mean, I, I don't know if it's tied into the stimulus or not, but it was definitely, um, you know, it's uh, as soon as that third stimulus was announced, um, you know, the business kind of came back. So I imagine that it was uh, very similar. Anyways, the other reason is that I just had a little baby and uh, January 19th, so 10 weeks now. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, anyways, that's been challenged too, uh, but I won't talk about it here. Um so okay, so what do we have here? We have an iPhone 11 Pro Max, and I get these, I get these all the time, all day. Uh, not necessarily the, the 11 Pro Max or whatever, but the 10, the 10 series, 10s, 10s, 10s uh, Max, 10, and it's it's all very very similar. Okay, so sometimes it boot loops like this. Sometimes it's stuck in recovery mode. Um, so the first thing I always do is I don't I don't I don't do anything hardware software wise. Um, the only thing I do is I just so just take the two pentalobe screws off, open this sucker up, <laughs> disconnect the front camera flex. All right, first thing I always do, man. So disconnect this thing, and you know if it's stuck in if it's stuck in if it's stuck in like recovery mode, you know with the charge cord and the iTunes sign, then all you need to do is just download this program called 3U Tools and um, and uh, plug it into your computer and then say exit, here I'll see if I can show you guys, let's see, okay hold on a second, let me see if I can show you guys, let's see if I can put this thing in recovery mode. Alright, so it's going to be in recovery mode, okay, and it's going to look, sorry, let me just disconnect this real quick so I can plug it in, let's see if this works, uh, this camera is not close enough, let's see if this is, works, actually I think this is plugged into the wrong computer, um, let's see if I can get it working, let's see, this one, so many cables here everywhere, Cable here, cable there, cable just about everywhere. Okay, let's see if I can plug into this one because I don't really use the other one anymore. As you can see, I'm fully prepared here after not having to make a video for several months here. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Alright, so we have the phone in recovery mode, okay, and... Um, I artificially put this in recovery mode. Sometimes it's in DFU mode. Same thing. Um, but what you want to do is down, download three tools, right? It's going to get into the screen right here. And just click exit recovery mode, okay, after the thing is unplugged. So, I don't know what's going on here, but let me disconnect the battery real quick. Actually, I didn't actually disconnect the... <laughs> Sorry. So, I actually disconnected the um, screen here, and not the actual... Okay, sorry. Alright, so let's just disconnect this front camera, air speaker flex here. Plug the screen back in. Plug the battery back in, and then plug it in. So I'll always rule out the always rule out the air speaker flex first, and um, I'd say like I don't know eighty percent of the time it's the air speaker flex, twenty percent of the time it's the charge port, um, maybe two percent of the time it's the that antenna at the bottom with the metal bracket. Sometimes it's the power flex. So, anyways, there you go, man. 
So it boots right back up. You don't lose any data. You don't even have to do a software restore on it or anything like that. Just disconnect it, disconnect the battery, plug this sucker back in, and and you're back. So now, so I guess we can just go a little bit deeper here and figure out um, what's going on with this air speaker flex here, okay? Because as soon as I plug this air speaker flex back, it's gonna it's gonna boot loop again, all right? But anyways, this customer went to Apple Store and Apple Store said we can trade you in for a new phone for a thousand dollars or whatever you know they have Apple Store you know their their main goal is to get you to buy a new uh, a new iPhone trade it in you know but um, a lot of times you know customers do that I'd say the majority of the time customers do that but um, that's only if they don't need their data and usually some of these customers need their data and then that, that's when they come to us for this you know because they will pay whatever they want they'll happily buy a new phone but they can't, they're not going to get their data back so so anyways let's let's dive a little deeper all right normally uh, sometimes whatever i'll just end the video there but let's just go a little deeper and find out exactly what the problem is and i hear this all the time but people say oh man i thought these phones were waterproof you know and and I hate to break the news to you, but these phones are not waterproof. So until they can get, until Apple gets rid of these holes, which they are really trying hard to do. Um, so the the first, I'll show you in a second here after I take this thing off. So take the air speaker flex off, okay? We'll inspect that in a second. But so until Apple gets rid of this hole right here. All right, this hole right here, which they're already trying to do with seamless, seamless um, phones, and these holes here, the charge port, you know, they're trying to do away with that, with the wireless charging, right? Until they can get rid of all these holes right here, this thing's not going to be waterproof. And probably the most common um, problem with water is this right here. Almost always, water gets in here, shorts out the flood illuminator and or the um, proximity sensor and phone goes into a boot loop you know, sometimes water gets in here and same thing happens okay um so and you know the water can get through here with something as simple as like uh you know a lot of people are using prl now to wipe down their phones or whatever it is and that happens all the time too and you know as as often you know the customer will swear that they did not get water in it but i've seen it time and time again and don't believe a word. Well, it's not that I don't believe a word that they say, but it's just that um, they maybe misremember or something like that. This one actually looks very clean. Nope, right here. Here you go. See that right there? Just a little bit right there. Oh, my fingernails are so crusty. I just ate orange, so that's not... Anyways. <laughs> All right, so... Whoa. So, just look right there. Don't look at my cuticles. Right there. That's all it takes right there. That's all it takes. And phone boot loops. Alright, so a lot of times the um after this right here, the flood illuminator will or the face ID will not work any longer. Which you know, I'm not gonna try to fix it because trying to fix a water damaged um Flood illuminator is just like futile, man. Those drive you crazy. <laughs> so don't even. I don't even offer to fix it. I just say, hey, water damage. We're gonna try to get your. And most most customers are happy with it, you know, because they get their data back, and that's all they really care about. Usually, usually that's all they care about because, um, you know, they don't send it to us. They don't usually send it to us wanting it repaired. I mean, they do want it repaired, but they're happy just getting their data off so anyways um so you can do one of two things just replace this entire thing uh if, if you're really ambitious you can try to take the flood illuminator, illuminator off put on to a new flex or whatever or clean the corrosion off, put it back you know which sometimes i'll try to do um i may try to do it in this case i may not but as you can see here this is a corrosion too i mean barely but that's enough to bring your whole, pho whole phone down man believe it or not and we get a ton of these all the time and it's, it's always the same problem and I don't know uh, 
sometimes this works right here. But um, the better method is probably just take it off and put it back on, you know. And it, I, I think I may actually try to do that with this one just because I don't think... Um, yeah, I'll, I'll try to do it with this one just because... So there's not much to these right here. I mean, well, there is much to them because they're they're very delicate. These things, but I'm actually not going to replace the the flex here, which which is what I would normally do if the flex was torn. I, that's what I do to try to fix it. So, but I'm just going to try to get this going so that So with these, you really just want to use very, very low heat, okay, and low, so I'm at 240 at a 15 airflow. And you really want to use low, low heat, man, otherwise you're, you're going to screw yourself. So 241 with a 15 airflow, just going to gently, gently take this thing off right here. Oh, you can't really see it. Let me, let me switch over to the other camera here. But I'll just let it be known that if this comes in like this, generally I will not try to fix this thing. I'll just get it working and uh, send it back to the customer. But this customer is a little lucky because I'm going to try to fix their face ID too. Uh, success rate is not great on these, to be honest with you. Repairing face ID actually after this. I'd probably say less than 10%, so it's kind of futile, but I'll give it a go. Because it didn't look like there was too much water in there, but you can tell there's definitely some green stuff, which is corrosion. So that's all it takes right there. See that? Not much. So try not to put too much. Try not to disturb it too much. Uh, as you can see, the corrosion is. I don't know if you can see it or not, but the corrosion is right there. Right there. So I'm just going to use a little isopropyl alcohol here. 99% isopropyl alcohol. Uh, can't really buy these from the stores. I think Amazon has them. 99% uh, means there's only 1% water in it, which uh, means that the rest kind of dries out fairly quick, easily. So you don't want any water on metal, otherwise that causes corrosion. So that's really it. Um, and then I will take a look at this side and clean this side up as well. Like, it's really just right there. I mean, there's not much else to it. Right there. So try not to get too much water. Okay. Success, like I said, success rate is awful on these things. So, but I'll give it a go. Um, next thing I like to do is just put a little bit of flux on it. Put a little bit of flux. Just a little bit. Just a little bit, okay. And then I just, I, I don't like touching up the, um, I don't like touching up the ground pads in the middle, just because you don't really need a whole lot of, shit, you don't really need a whole lot of um, solder on those, okay, just because that's enough, and you don't want it too much on there, because, ah, oh, shit, thing's not even hot. thing about the ground pads is that once you, once you try to like touch it up a little bit, a ton of solder sticks on it, then it bulges, and then it's not going to connect on the edges. So I just I just try to leave those alone for the most part, and I just try to get these get these uh, non ground points, you know, just a little bit of solder, just clean it up a little bit, so that you know it can make contact. So don't put too much flux. And then this also takes takes off the the lead free solder and uh, puts it with leaded solder, which has a lower melting point. So, all right, so I think, I think I'm just gonna leave it just like that. And then this side, I'm not even gonna touch up. I don't think at least, maybe, maybe I will, let's see. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna touch that up, it looks fine. So, time to put this sucker back. And same old thing, you just put a little bit of, uh, you know, 240 degrees and 15 heat, or 15 airflow, and this is going to blow away, so just be careful. 
and make sure you don't have another flood of luminaire nearby because sometimes they'll blow into the, to that direction and then you won't know which one's which. Just make sure that these are fairly even, otherwise you're not going to get a good seal on them. You're not going to get good connection on all of them. Alright, so just like that. Is somebody calling? Yes. Uh, Alright, uh, somebody came by. Um, okay, so let's see. Alright, so just hold tight. Heat this mother. And let it melt. It's not going to take very long. I'm going to put a little bit more paste, uh, flux on it. Just like this. Just like that. The big thing is really just don't let it blow away. See, it's trying to blow away, and I'm actually, like, the piece is not actually getting there. Oh no. So, you should just be able to kind of squiggle it a little bit. There you go. See how it's reseeding itself? So, just like that. Alright, I think that's it. Don't want to do too much more than that. I don't, at least. And then, and then, and then, if you really want, you can kind of take a look, see if it's got a nice little connection or not. It looks pretty good. All right, so And I'll just use a little bit of IPA to clean this up a little bit. Not much. You don't want to use too much IPA because something with the sensor, sometimes you use a little too much and something happens to the sensor, you get weird errors. So I think I'll probably just leave it like this. Just, and then just make sure that your uh, proximity sensor flex didn't de desolder. So let's go ahead and put this back and see if everything works. See if it works or not. If it doesn't work, it's not a big deal. <laughs> I'm not going to spend too much time on it, like I said. So I'm not very hopeful that the face ID is going to work because I don't, I'm not even sure if I've ever gotten it to work, honestly, after this water damage. I don't, I don't know if something shorts out in the, in the thing or what, but it really, really, I mean, really, the face ID really ever works, but, um, sometimes the, sometimes the, um, air speaker flex will work, well, majority of times the air, air speaker flex will work again. And as you can tell, there wasn't much corrosion, you know, it was like just a little bit of corrosion. So, let's plug everything back. And... Okay. Let's see what <clears throat> see what's going on.
Not hopeful. Not hopeful at all, man. The good thing is that sometimes, like, well, off, you won't have the um, face ID error, you know, so you might be able to trade this thing in. So, anyways, let me go ahead and type in the passcode without you guys looking, and then I'll, I'll give the face ID thing a try. You guys won't be able to see it, but you'll have to trust me on this. Usually, it'll just say, like, move higher, move lower. Oh! It actually does work. Uh, okay, so it does work. Um, let me try, make sure everything else works on this thing. So let me just see if the air speaker works in Prox. Alright, air speaker in Prox works, so that is that. And we are back in business. So anyways, um, if you send it to me, I cannot guarantee that the face ID will work, but, um... We will get it out of boot loop and your, and hopefully your uh, data will be safe. And so this is 11 Pro Max stuck in recovery mode slash boot looping, all right? Thanks for watching. And uh, it's good to be back. Hope everyone else is doing well here. I just wanted to say thank you for watching our YouTube channel. We make these videos to help you guys learn how to do micro soldering um, for normal repairs. Um, I want to take this time to promote our online course here. We created an online course hosted at Udemy.com. Um, if you go directly to Udemy, it's 150 bucks. If you go through microsoldering.com, click on store shop, and then click on this first uh, product right here there's a coupon code that uh, gives you fifty dollars off of our online course so our online course it was created by Tom and myself um, it contains four and a half to five hours of online video instruction um, it'll teach you everything that you need to know to get started with micro soldering so basically we um, we start with the basics you know just the component level, um, how to use ZXW tools, um, what kind of, how to set up your tools, what kind of tools you need, um, how to set up your hot air rework stations, um, use your micro pencil and tweezers and DC power supply and all that stuff. And then we go into actual repairs. So the four most common problems are no backlight, no touch, no charge, and loop disease. And with the newer versions of the iPhones, um, we also have a section on uh, logic board separation because with the 10 and up, uh, the logic boards come in two pieces. So we also have a section on how to separate them and put them back together. And then our last section is um, all about data recovery. So this is, it's, it's four and a half hours of just good stuff just to help you get started, okay? And with the way that cell phone repair is going these days, I think it's um, essential to learn how to do micro soldering for your business. Um, if you're interested, like I said, just go to the website here, microsoldering.com, and click on uh, store shop, and then click on this right here, and you'll get $50 off. So... Thank you for watching our channel and hopefully you'll enjoy the course. Thank you.